The best thing to do as a reseller when you're not getting the performance you want out of your store is to step back and look at yourself in the mirror. Be honest with yourself and say, okay, what can I do? How can I change to improve my performance as a reseller on this platform? Hey, what's up guys? So welcome back to Bama J Bird Resale. I'm Josh. It's good to have you with me again today. Uh, we're picking up where we left off last time. We're doing two things in this video. The first thing we're going to be doing, of course, is going over some items that have sold. Uh, just show you some cool uh, sales. It's been a pretty good couple of days. Uh, this will be like two days worth of sales. There's 12 items going out for just over $654. $654.81. Not only are we going to be looking at what has sold, but we're also going to pick up where we left off in our last video with our question that we began this series on. This, this topic is eBay broken. Is it dying or is it just me? Now, as I expressed to you in the previous video, I do believe in most every circumstance, most of the problem with our stores usually traces back to looking at ourselves in the mirror. There's something we're not doing well, not doing efficiently, something we need to change, something we need to add. Uh, in most cases, I, I don't believe eBay is the problem. Uh, eBay is fine. eBay is, you know, it's like any other platform. It's going to have its issues, its ups and downs. Uh, there's things that we may not understand as, as sellers all the time. I believe eBay is, is as large a marketplace or larger now than it has ever been. It's a good time to be on eBay. Much of how uh, it performs, how our store performs, has to do with us. But some markets are flooded. Uh, some goods are, are not you know, as good as, they don't sell like they used to, uh, some items. So you, you have to really be very, uh, very meticulous. You have to be very efficient. You have to be very knowledgeable about what the current trends are. You have to stay on top of your game. And so that's what I'm here to address. Again, is eBay broken and dying or is it just me? And so we're gonna look at some things that we can do to address this. We can't change eBay. I have no ability. You can call them every day, all day long, and the responsiveness there is gonna be very minimal to just a small seller like me. So we can't do that oftentimes. But what I can impact is how I run and operate my business, what I do, what I say, how I work, and uh, those types of things. So. Uh, we'll begin with some items that have sold recently. We're going to start with uh, the lowest sales and work our way up to my best sale of the last couple of days. The first sale, I have a cool, it's called the Wild Fiber. And so this is long sleeve, of course. This uh, I picked this up for, I think it was $5.99 or $6.99. I can't remember. I do remember the store I got it at, and that's generally where these fall price-wise. I got uh, $15 plus shipping for that. All right, next item going out. This is Tony Hawk Pro Skater for Nintendo 64 with the booklet. And so I got $16.99 plus shipping on that. And that's out of that lot that I bought. So next item going out the door. This is a vintage GE 40 channel handheld CB transceiver. Really cool item. They don't have a huge amount of value. This one, however, was in great shape. The antenna is perfect. This item, I think I gave $3.99 for this at the thrift store. I know I got it at the same thrift I got the cool shirt, and uh, this sold for $17 plus shipping. Took an offer on that one as well. Hey, what's up guys? Just wanted to jump in here real quick and say, if you haven't already subscribed and you've been watching my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, if you don't mind, go ahead and give me a thumbs up on this video if you're watching, if you've made it this far, and hit that notification bell. Also, I just wanna take just a moment and say thank you so much. Uh, for all the encouragement and all the support from the reselling community. Guys, it's because of people out there that pay it forward and us supporting each other that our channels are able to grow and we're able to be successful doing this. So a special thanks to a few people. Uh, thank you, Caleb, over at Old Pass for all the help that you've been, the shout outs, uh, the, the comments, the encouragement. Uh, thank you, Rocky Top Picker, Ben, man. I can't thank you enough for having me on live the other night and just trying your best to help not only me, but the rest of the reselling community grow and, and how you work to pay it forward. And also, uh, Grams and Pops Vintage, guys, I appreciate y'all. Appreciate uh, the shout out you gave me on Instagram. And uh, maybe we get to see it planes to profit. And guys, if you haven't, uh, check that out. Go look them up. Look up all three of those guys. Check out their channels. Check out the things that's going on. They're doing good stuff and they're there to help you guys. So appreciate it. Let's get back to the video. 
The next item is another Nintendo 64 game. So N64, Diddy Kong. It does have the booklet, as you can see. Some fabulous condition and uh, just super clean, super nice. It's not scratched up. This is a really good, good example. If you're a collector and you're looking for a really clean cartridge, this is a good one for you. But anyway, this sold for $25 plus ship. I did take an offer on that. I had it listed up closer to 30, but 25 plus shipping. All right, next item. These are Duluth uh, Flex Fire Hose Pants in gray. Of course, this is the heavy canvas uh, dungaree style Duluth pants. These are really nice. Uh, they're, they're really expensive off the rack, but I found that the resale market on these probably isn't what it was at one time. I think I mentioned this in a previous video. Duluth clothing stores have really branched out. They have locations all across the country now. Uh, they're advertising. They, they do sell a lot of products, and it's a very popular brand but it has driven the resale market down somewhat. So I got 25 bucks for these plus shipping. So it's still a good purchase. You can get these for four or five bucks, six bucks, probably even $10. If you're, if you're not worried about the margin, I don't use a lot to invest that much in a single pair of pants, but 10 into 25 wouldn't be a horrible deal if you can turn it over quickly. But again, I think I had about $6 in these. These were, I believe a Goodwill find. So they're probably 5.99 shelf price into 25 plus ship. Sorry for the noise. I dropped that a little hard. All right, next item. So if you remember, I did a uh, I did a short uh, little reel, I guess you'd say, on, on YouTube here a while back, if you see my reels, uh, on a CD lot that I had bought. Now, I don't necessarily advocate this, but this was uh, uh, one of the better CDs that I've pulled out so far. Uh, this is from 1992. Um, it's called Body Count, and uh, I sold this for... $32 plus shipping. So I told you, if you remember back, I only gave $30 for that entire lot of CDs. And I've already sold one, I think, or two out of it. But that one right there by itself just almost paid for uh, the entire purchase. So uh, that was a great, great sale for me as far as the, the cash value. So the next item going out. This is a pair of Master Sportsman Camo Bib Overalls. I'm getting tongue tangled here a little bit, uh, but this is a really large size, a 4430. These are non-insulated, uh, but they still sold really well. I think I had, I uh, think these came from Tuscaloosa, and I gave $3 for these, $3 on this pair. This comes from the store where all the clothes are $3 pretty much, unless they are on running a sale. So $3 for these, and uh, I sold these for $19.99 plus shipping. All right, next item. We have a Tiara International Christmas Collection. This is a cardigan. It's a very kind of one of those gaudy, uh, not ugly sweater, not so ugly sweater, I think is what they refer to these as, you know, because it's really cutesy, you know. It's not the, the you know, weird stuff, but this was in my store for about a year. I bought this really at the end of Christmas last year and been waiting, hoping it would sell come Christmas time, and it did. It's not a great size, it's a small, which is usually harder to get rid of, but these are vintage and it's fairly popular. I actually only gave uh, $2 for this at my one of my local thrift stores that I like to go to, and uh, this sold for $30 plus shipping on an offer. It's two into 30, I like it. All right, next item. If you watched the previous video, you know that I just sold a pair of Keens in a men's size, 11 I think it was, that I picked up uh, the same day that I got these. These are a women's. I think these are size seven and a half, and I got these for the same price. These were $5. They're running shoes at 75% off. The, the men's, I think I sold for like $22.50. I took a kind of a low offer on this. I probably could have held out and got 30, but I got 32 for these. Thinking back, I believe I've had these listed for maybe a week. So I've sold two pair of sandals in the middle of winter time. Um, that's, that's pretty crazy, but you know, it is what it is. Next item. So this is Probably my favorite item besides the Nintendo games that I sold this this last couple of days. This is a Santa Claus cloth teak. Yes, you see this correctly. He's holding a bag of McDonald's and a drink. And so this is from the Possible Dreams collection. This is called Woke Up or Works Are Working Up an Appetite. And you'll notice that his shirt, maybe you can see it in the camera, it is red and white with yellow. It's kind of like the McDonald's colors. So it's almost like he's got a uniform on. Really cool. I just thought this was awesome. I picked this up at my my little thrift shop here in town. It it did really well. I'm trying to remember now. This 
uh, was I think six dollars. That's what I paid for this. So so I was able to turn about six bucks on this particular item, six dollars into seventy four ninety nine. What a great sale! So six dollars into seventy four ninety nine, seventy five bucks. I'll take that. Uh, six days a week and twice on Sunday if it can happen. I can find the stuff to sell. All right. So uh, these last two are the biggest money items that I purchased. So I rarely find uh, great shoes at America's Thrift Store. That's one of the places I go to regular. Uh, I wouldn't say that they don't have any come in, but they price their stuff up a lot. And other resellers just raid the shoes so quick, man, by the time the carts are coming out, they're already snatching and grabbing. I just rarely run into anything. I go to two or three different locations and rarely see good shoes. But the other day I was in there and I hadn't really found a ton of stuff. And so I decided, well, why not? I'll, I'll make a quick trip by the shoes and just take a glance. And when I got to the first little row of the women's side there, I just happened to look, man, I saw gold buckle shining and I recognized them. And you probably will too. So I saw these. These are Tory Burch uh, ballet flats. This is the Sierra Shiraz. And man, I thought, seriously? Tory Burches? There's got to be something wrong with them. I picked them up, inspected them. Everything was good. The soles were good. In fact, they were still so new that one of the stickers was still on the bottom of it. And I thought, holy cow, you know, they're clean. They're nice. They're not scuffed. They're like almost new on the bottom. And uh, I looked these up, and the last pair of these that is sold, uh, in this color had actually sold for $130. So I mean, I remember, no, I'm sorry, $119.99. I think it's $120. And so they had a really high sold comp. I didn't think that mine were in quite as good a condition. So, you know, I priced mine up. Now, I don't, don't get me wrong, I priced them up. But I, I kind of had determined in my mind that if I got a really strong offer quickly on these, because I only gave $7.99, I would take it. That's what happened. Um, I got an offer of $85. I started to counter, but I found in my experience, probably only one out of 10 times that I counter offer someone that offers a kind of a strong offer, do I actually get a response at all? I don't get a decline. I don't get another counter offer. They don't counter back at their own price. They just let it go. And so, you know, I was kind of in a, kind of in time. I probably could have let these stay on. These weren't on, uh, on my list and, or sorry, these were not listed is what I should have said. Uh, more than probably two weeks I probably could have got a hundred bucks for these had I waited. I've got another pair. I'm going to prove to you what happens when you do wait. Uh, so I almost kind of regretted making this sale. I told my wife, I said, I really feel like I shouldn't have took that offer now, but I just got swept up in the moment, caught up in sales that were coming through and making big sales. So $85 for a $7.99, $8 investment. I'll take that all day long. So that was a great, great sale either way. And a great find. You don't, like I said, you don't find Tory Burches too often unless they're just plumb, wore down, and shot uh, at that particular store. Now, this last purchase, I got these over in Birmingham. Um, I went over there, and me and my wife, we spent the day. It's been probably, Lord, two or three months ago. And uh, one of the stores that we stopped at, these were on a shelf just as you go in the door. They just had some some special items, and I gave, I think it was 20 bucks for these. These are Birkenstocks, but they're kind of like a Mary Jane with the heel. These are, you know, like a winter style shoe if you're gonna wear Birkenstocks in the winter. And they're in fantastic condition. There's just a little bit of heel drag wear on them. And I looked these up, and these are actually harder to find uh, from what I could tell. I mean, I'm not an expert on Birkenstocks, but these are a higher dollar pair, and, and they're, they're not a lot of them out there. And so the sale prices are pretty high. So I priced these up. If I gave 24 of them. I priced them up at $119. And uh, I've had tons of interest. I've had offers, man. I've had offers that were kind of low, you know, 60 bucks, 80 bucks, 70 bucks. And I'd come back at like 100, you know. I've sent out some offers at like 95, trying to really push it a little bit and, and see if I could make the sale when I had someone interested. And I was just letting them sit. And then the other day, man, the phone went cha-ching and my wife said oh that was a good sale that was those Birkenstocks you bought I said which ones she said the black ones you know the ones you've had for a while I said really I said how much did that because I couldn't remember if I sent an offer out she said uh looks like it was whatever you was asking I said really I said how about that so these sold for $119 plus shipping on a $20 purchase great sale uh, shoes can be a really good item to watch out for if you find the right brands. That's the moral of that story. All right, so in the last video where I began addressing our question for today uh, about is eBay dying, is eBay broken, or is it just me? We talked about things that had to do with what we're selling, okay? 
uh, finding the right items, uh, finding things that are in demand, finding things that sell faster, looking for better inventory. Sometimes we get our store bogged down with a lot of slow moving inventory and things that really just don't have enough of a market or have too slow of a sell through rate, uh, things that just aren't desirable. And, and I think, you know, one of the keys uh, to really having a well-functioning store with a really good sell-through rate for your store is to make sure that you don't load up too much. I mean, it's hard. I, I, I get out there myself as a reseller, and it's hard sometimes when you see a good that, you know, an item for sale that's maybe like a buck or 50 cents or two for a dollar. You know, you're at a sale or at a thrift store, and it's something that does sell, even though it's a slow sell-through, and maybe it sells for 18 or $20, and you think, well, man, I mean, a dollar and 18 or 20, I can afford to hold on to that for a while. But guys, still, if there's 5,000 of them listed and only 200 sold, you may be holding on to that thing for like a year, two years before it sells, even trying to outprice the market. Because oftentimes, you know, you run into the issue, it's not the color someone's looking for, it's not the size they're looking for. And so it still makes it hard to get rid of in a timely manner. And that, that will tend to cause your store to build up a lot of inventory that's just stale and not moving. And so with that thought in mind, today the, in this topic, I want us to look at, you know, what can we do about those old listings that seemingly have just gone stale and are not going anywhere? How can we address old listings? And there's a lot of advice out there already about this. And some of this may seem like it's a repeat. But number one, I would say, go back and check your old listings. Go back and, and actually read over and, and look at what you have you know, in your title. Look and see that your word arrangement is correct. Make sure that, you know, I like to put the brand first. You know, get that brand out there. Get all your keywords, your best keywords to the front. Uh, make sure that you don't have it bogged down with a bunch of generic terminology. Sometimes when we do that sell similar, we pick one that as far as the product item, it's the exact color, exact size, exact model. And sometimes we don't make enough changes to the title and the title is actually not that great. And so sometimes we need to, we need to fix that. Go back and check the category. Guys, I can't tell you how many times I've noticed this when doing a listing, especially off a of sale similar, that in creating that new uh, listing for myself, I would happen to just be scanning through the details and see the category and be like, why, why is this listed here? You know, it, it might be a, a man's t-shirt and it's listed, you know, under women's blouses or something. I'm like, they're never going to find it there. People aren't going to look there for that particular shirt. So it's really important too, to make sure that you check what the categories are and make sure there's no errors, whether it be a category, whether it be a size. I've had this issue sometimes on my listings where I forgot to redo the size in the details and it would confuse buyers. And when I would finally have someone ask about it, They'd be like, hey, can you check this for me? I think I'm interested, but in the title it says this, it says it's a 32. In, excuse me, in the listing it says it's a 34. Which one is it? And I realize, okay, <laughs> I realize the best solution to that is to include pictures with measurements. And I do that now. But you know, if you were a young reseller, a new reseller, I still have inventory in my store that I haven't gone back into clothing inventory and pulled out of the poly bags and did new measurements on because I didn't know that that was that important when I first started. Now, you know, it wasn't too long after I got started, after a few months, I'm watching a lot more reseller videos that I realized, you know, clothing doesn't move great if people can't see photographs of the measurements or at least, you know, write down the measurements and include a photograph that shows those measurements. I know you can type them up in the details. I just think you tend to do better when it's in the pictures. Anyway, again, uh, make sure that you have your items uh, properly described in the details and the title. Make sure it's in the right category. Another thing you can do is recheck comps because comps tend to change. Sometimes an item that was super popular six or eight months ago, maybe it was kind of on its way out. Maybe it was starting to trail off and you didn't know that. I wouldn't know that. So let me back this up a little bit. So you need to go back and recheck the comps. Make sure that the overall value and desirability hasn't changed and therefore the actual comp has changed significantly. You may have yourself priced out of the market for that good. Once you check that, you also need to think in terms of, you know, are you doing free shipping or are you doing 
buyer pay shipping. Because if you are doing buyer pay shipping, you've got to think about, okay, if I'm pricing mine at X number of dollars, what is it going to cost once the buyer has to pay shipping? Because if the total cost of the goods, say that, that buyers have been willing to pay is 30 bucks, and you see where shipping's gonna run, say, $8 for the buyer. And so you say, okay, so I can price mine at 22 and that'll make it 30 bucks. But what you're not considering is those, those buyers that are paying $8 are the ones that are in your little regional area. If you go outside of that, you know, if like for me, I'm in Alabama, if I'm sending this thing to New York or California, you know, way off somewhere far away, then that buyer may have to pay like, you know, $12, you know, or, or $13 for shipping. And therefore, what's actually happening is you're pricing all of those buyers out of your market for that good. Because if 30 is the most buyers are willing to pay and they're having to pay 12 in shipping, well, if you price yours at 22, they're paying, what, $34. So they're not going to do that. They're going to find one in their area. So if you want to also be able to pull people from that market, you have to adjust your price down a little more. You may have to set your price at like 18. So pay attention to comps. Pay attention to how you price your goods in relation to the total cost for the buyer because that's going to play a big part. That's why some people do a flat shipping charge. They'll just set it at like, eight dollars that way they know if i price it buyer pay shipping and it's always going to add eight to it whether they're in california or for me whether they're in alabama every buyer pays eight and sometimes that makes it easier to just get a total cost i think that's also why some sellers choose to uh go with free shipping because they just calculate how much they're willing to take okay when they subtract the maximum amount of shipping out of that item what would they be what do they think is a good price and so uh, that works great in a lot of cases as long as it doesn't end up going back to Alaska maybe because sometimes if it gets far enough, it can really begin to cost a lot more. Now, that being said, uh, a couple of other things to do. I think another thing to do when you revisit your old listings, and I've noticed this with some of mine that I need to go back and pull and work on, check your photos. Make sure your photos are good. Maybe update those. Go back and look at what your main photo is. Maybe work on how the item is staged if you can make it look better. There's lots of, of, of different ways to improve the quality of the photos. Now, I stick with just a clean background for the most part, even though I know there's a lot of AI out there now that will produce all kinds of crazy backgrounds and backdrops uh, to help stage your, your items for your photographs. So you do what's comfortable for you. I like just a really nice, clear, clean photo with a, uh, a really good background, you know, a really light color or a white background. When I first started on eBay a couple of years ago, and I've got some inventory that's been sitting that long, my wife and my son both were helping me and we had the worst picturing setup ever. I mean, it was terrible. We still made sales and we tried the best, you know, we could do with what we had at the time. But I was trying to make sure I only purchased equipment that the reselling money coming in, right? That it was showing that it could pay for. I didn't want to spend any more money out of pocket than absolutely necessary. So a lot of the photos just aren't great. The lighting was bad. The background was bad. You know, just the staging was bad. And, you know, they just need new photos. And so sometimes, you know, we have poor photos. The quality, I've seen sometimes where, you know, I'm taking a series of photos of something and uh, I, I start off sometimes with the, with the clothing item, I'll start off taking some photos of the flaws and things like that. And then I'll finish by laying it out flat, taking those photos and then just shift those up to the front. Well, I've seen where I forgot to do that. You know, and I got some weird photograph as the main photo. I'm like, well, nobody's going to really even see it or care about it with that photograph. So anyway, so the last thing I would suggest is to do what so many resellers have suggested in the past, and that is to take your old inventory, end the listing, sell similar, keep the same photos, the same description, and then go back in and make, you know, any minor changes you think might need to be done as far as like editing a photo, uh, editing the title, these things that we've discussed. Uh, but by doing that, it pushes your listing back toward the front. Uh, so if you're not paying for promotions or paying for, you know, running sales and things like that or for advertisements, then you're going to have to do something from time to time to make your items uh, reappear near the top of the eBay search results. And usually items that are newly listed land high on the search results. And, you know, 
if it's a collectible and you had it priced too high, uh, there are people that will have, you know, automatic alert set that will, you know, let them know when something new in that area is posted so that they can go and check it out. And so sometimes you can, you can find a buyer that you had missed because of being priced out of their market. You can find one really quick for some of those collectible type items. Once you get your price right, if you do the end listing, sell similar and relist. All right. So just a few tips guys. I hope that wasn't too very long. I really appreciate y'all hanging out with me today. Uh, it's been great and uh, just keep going at it. Don't, don't, you know, don't get discouraged. Keep working hard. Uh, keep listing those items. Keep getting that shipping out the door as quickly as possible. And guys, remember, I love you. God loves you. And whatever you do, don't ever give up.